Hi, welcome again by Daiko Reviews. Today I'm going to talk about a game based on a movie with Sylvester Stallone in it. It's a movie that was released in 1993 or 1994, I'm not 100% sure, but there's a game based on it which was released in 1995, and it's a game from Acclaim Entertainment. You may think Acclaim Entertainment, don't they make sucky games? Well, not necessarily. They actually made a good game for once. It's a game that was released on Super NES, the Sega uh, Genesis, or Mega Drive, as I used to call it here, uh, the Sega Game Gear, and the Nintendo Game Boy. But we're gonna look at a different version. It's the DOS version of Judge Dredd. Yes, that's right, there's a DOS version of this game. And I must say it's pretty good. It's a very decent port of the Super NES game. It has all the graphics, all the sounds, it's got CD audio, got very nice graphics and very smooth animation. I'd say it's a perfect well, translation of the Super NES game. It's easily as good. Uh, now we're taking a look at the box. As you can see it's pretty big. It's uh, very typical for MS-DOS games at the time. Nowadays games all come in DVD boxes, but Back then it was all large cardboard boxes. Uh, well, as you can see, it's got Mr. Stallone's face on it. It says that it is a DOS product, but it works with Windows 95. Well, here are some features listed. Uh, at the back there is some, well, some images, but not screenshots. Uh, here are some pictures of uh, enemy characters in the game. These are 3D images and they are also featured in the game uh, but I'll come to that later uh, if we look inside we'll find the manual for a game and it's well nice actually it's pretty big again the, the artwork is looking nice uh, the inside is monochrome as you can see uh, it tells you some things how to set the game up and how to control it well and the usual stuff like uh, pickups and weapons, some information about the levels. Then there's the technical supplement. Very important because uh, setting up DOS games can be hard, especially this one, because there is something with this game, with its DOS extender, that may seem that it looks like it's almost impossible to get it to run, but it's a glitch with the DOS extender. There's a fix for that. I'll get to that later, but it's not even mentioned in this manual, and I find it appalling. It's so important, and they didn't put it in there. But besides that, it tells you some other things about memory management, and how you make a DOS boot disk. Uh, stuff with audio cards, if you have problems with that. Uh, some compatibility issues with Windows 95. Well, it's all the usual stuff, really. And here's the game CD-ROM. This is the back. Uh, this is a pretty interesting thing because it's a mixed mode CD. That means there is part data and part audio CD. Uh, the first track is data and all the later tracks are audio tracks. So you can simply pop it in your audio CD player and listen to the music. And they are exactly the same as the Super NES version. They even sound the same. It looks like they've sampled it. But it doesn't have all the tracks. Some of them are missing. I guess it's for technical reasons. Uh, and here is a well, sort of advertisement leaflet with some of the games they had. It mentions PC, CD-ROM, PlayStation and Sega Saturn. Well, as you might, might know, the Sega Saturn went nowhere. Uh, it's even got an ad in it for Alien Trilogy, which is also a very nice game, actually. Okay, this is the uh, introductionary animation. You see it is developed by Acclaim and Probe Entertainment. Probe being the actual developer. Well, oh, you see, nicely animated Judge Dread Batch. This animation is not in the Super NES version. In the Super NES version it's really just a static logo.
the introduction sequence. In this version it's also slightly nicer the way the plane actually flies into the screen. Well the story is pretty much the same as the movie. Well, what else would you expect really? <laughs> They were judge, jury and executioner, all in one, they were the judges. Oh well, that's a snazzy introduction. Well, this is the menu screen. You can start the game, restore or choose the options. Okay, the game starts. Well, before the actual level start, you get a short introduction uh, with the situation and then uh, what your objectives are. I've uh, cut it a little bit because that's rather tedious. Oh, well, as you can see, you can pretty much uh, punch and kick and you can shoot. Uh, when you destroy those uh, boxes, or actually their bins, you can get extra weapons. Also, you can arrest perps. It's one of the objectives in this level. With the grenades, you can uh, destroy the ammo containers. Yet another objective, otherwise you won't be able to pass the level. Watch out for the fumes. Some more crates. Be careful with these because they can the explosion can actually hurt, so you always have to take a little distance. Some bonus items. It's very convenient if you shoot from the ladder. <laughs> Just look at that animation. I think it's pretty funny. Yeah, there's a console. In the console you have a bunch of options, your mission status, the ammo status, the dread status and extra information. The extra information is not featured in any other version, so it's exclusive to the DOS version. Um. These are the animated uh, enemies. As I mentioned earlier in the introduction, they were uh, featured at the back of the box. So if you go through these, you get some general information about these uh, enemies, about their names and their descriptions, some of their attacks. Well, I think for a 1995 game, this was really nice. And this is not featured in the Super NES version. Anyway, I think it looks cool. Okay, that was the end of the menu. Now we simply proceed. You can see how athletic he is. So destroy some more ammo boxes. So, again, it's a very good strategy to just shoot from the ladder. Oh, 
Oh, watch out for that air vent. And here's a little trick. If you do this, you can get an extra life. Because they are hidden down the ladder. That patch, for instance. You need those. They're good for you. Okay, we're almost at the end of the first part of stage one. Oh, you gotta watch out for those uh, flying ghosts. If they touch you, you lose some energy. As you can see, you can swap your weapons. Well, one of the final enemies, and then we're done. Okay, we've completed our primary and secondary objective. Oh, that was uh, stage one, part one. Ah, now we're uh, skipping ahead a little bit because I want to show you the boss and the boss is hard I think in the Genesis version the boss is a way it's, it's really just a lot easier I don't know, in this version he's tough there's no real strategy for this, you just gotta mess around with him well, and he will actually light you on fire Just drop some grenades. Oops. Oh, yeah, let's destroy some fats with acid. Man, that guy is tough. Ah, finally! We nailed them! Ah, oh, we can always use that. Can't have enough hearts. the final enemy and then the first stage is completed. Now we're moving on to stage 2. In this stage you have to close the security doors and to do this you use the consoles. There are also some secrets in this stage, but you just gotta find them out for yourself. Oh, and watch out for those uh, things that drop litter. That crap actually hurts you. Well, just kick him. Punch and kick. So we're logging on to the console. And to lock the doors, you don't really have to do anything. Just 
go through that console and it'll do the rest by itself. So we can pretty much skip all this. Okay, that's done. One of, one of the difficulties I had with this game was that it wouldn't run. Uh, at first I thought the problem was Windows 98 when I tried it on my Pentium 2, but it appears that that's not really the cause. Uh, there's simply a problem with the DOS extender. Uh, we basically have to fool it. Uh, next I'm going to show you how to do this and how to create a batch file. Uh, this way you can quite easily solve the problem. So I've got it here in the DOS box. As you can see the game won't run. Well, that's because there's a problem with the memory manager. The same problem will also uh, happen on a real DOS PC, but it's quite easy to fix. Uh, before you start the game, uh, law.exe, you have to type in this command. Set DOS 16M is 4M. The fix for this problem is quite easy, we have, simply have to change this. It used to be uh, law.x here, but we changed it to start on that. And presto, there you have it, now the game runs fine. Okay, we're gonna look at some save games. Uh, this first save game is a level down in the sewers, and you can notice that the sound effects are actually quite nice. I think they're slightly better than in the Super NES version. Uh, however, the Super NES version has some really nice uh, graphical and audio effects in this stage, with an echo and some lightning. And that's uh, not featured in the DOS version. Ooh, I've been let on fire. Oh, I'm a burning man again. Ah, we're gonna look at the 3D driving stage. At first glance, you may think this is a Super NES level. Well, yes, it is actually, but this is from the PC version. Just like the Super NES, the PC has a Mode 7 stage, and it's all done in software. 486 uh, is more than capable enough for this. And you see it works quite nicely. The stage is actually pretty hard too. Oh, but hey, it's a nice intermezzo. Well, you've seen that uh, high-speed Mode 7-esque uh, flying slash driving stage. Now let's look at some of the other versions. I'm going to show you something of the uh, Genesis version. And later I'm going to compare the uh, Super NES and the Genesis version side by side. But first we'll look at how the driving is on the Sega Genesis. Alright, now for some flying action on the Sega Genesis. As you can see it doesn't look as fancy as the Super NES or the DOS version. The Genesis just wasn't fast enough to do Mode 7. This actually looks kind of primitive in comparison. And you guessed it, this music isn't from the Genesis version either. Ah, that's the Super NES version. Just look at the rain effects. It's just that little extra touch that I'm missing in the DOS version. So yeah, maybe the Super NES was slightly better. At least in comparison to the PC. I know it's just a nuisance and a minor detail, 
Oh, and hey, look at those parallax backgrounds. Just seem to be slightly more colorful. Oh, hey, that's the Genesis version now. The color palette is darker. Actually, I think the PC version's color palette is a bit more like the Genesis version. Okay, let's wrap it up. Uh, my final verdict of this game. I think it's a very decent game. Uh, it doesn't really matter which version you play, they're all fine. Oh, and one last thing. It was also released on the Game Boy and the Game Gear. Uh, they're slightly different, but not much. Uh, if you want to go for the portable version, uh, choose the Game Gear version. It just works a lot better than on the Game Boy. Uh, the Game Boy just isn't quite powerful enough for this game. But in all other cases, it doesn't really matter. Thanks for watching. Good boy.